All right. Hey everyone, if you're new here, welcome. If you're not, thank you for watching again. So this is gonna be my third tutorial ever. And for this year, I have been so in love with crochet. It's definitely a crochet era for me and I couldn't be any happier because I'm able to find something where I can release my creative side. I'm able to create something that I envision or I see something at the store and all I can think of is I can make that. Since I started crocheting, I keep talking about it. I keep telling my friends, oh yeah, I've been planning on making Christmas sweaters because I wanted to wear it for Christmas parties and events or even going out, going to a Christmas market. So I am going to show you guys how to do it if you wanted to do it this Christmas or in the future. You can save this video, but anyways, let's get into it and I will show you exactly how I did it. It's super simple, it's beginner friendly, and yeah, let's get on. Let's begin working on the body part. First, let us do a slip knot. Then we will be chaining 81. That is roughly 21 inches. So alter as you please. I wanted it to be a little bit roomy, but honestly, if you wear a size small, this is a tad bigger on the body area. Do as you will with that information and adjust it accordingly. After chaining 81, we will be doing a lemon peel stitch. So we will be skipping the first chain and then we will be doing single crochet. On the next one, we will do a double crochet. And then you guessed it, the pattern is simple. You alternate between those two stitches, single, double, single, double, until you reach the end of the row. End result of this stitch is so pretty. It does eat a little bit of the yarn way faster than I expected, but it's still pretty, so I pushed through with it. Once you're done with that, I'll meet you at the end of the row and I'll tell you what to do next. Once you're at the end of the row, and if you're following my pattern, you should end with a double crochet. After that, chain one, and then turn your work. Since we ended with double crochet, we will be stacking single crochet on top of it. Then on the next one, we will be doing double crochet on top of the single crochet. It is easy to identify which is single or double crochet. You can look at the bottom stitch or the first row stitch and you will be able to tell the single versus the double. Continue doing the same pattern until you reach row 45 or approximately 12.5 inches in height. Then we will be decreasing or you can do your desired length. The decrease is for the color area. I played around with this pattern and I found that decreasing make the color ribbing look much better. Once you are at row 45, chain 1 and then turn your work. Do the same pattern but since we are leaving a space for the neck, I used an old sweater, measure how wide the neck hole is and then applied it on this project. If you remember, we have 80 chains originally, so we are going to make 32 stitches on each side that will leave 16 inches in the middle. And that is perfect for the neck hole that I will be making. So basically, I just did a little bit of math, you guys. Um, just apply it on your project, find an old sweater, and you can adjust it according to your size. Once you reach the 30 second stitch or the end of the row, meet me and I will show you how to decrease. 31 
and then the last chain you should end with a double crochet 30 two. now we are going to do a decrease so you're not going to chain one but turn your work so we basically how I decrease on this one is I basically just skip the first chain and then I'm just going to do the next so yeah then do anything special on this one so I'm just going to do double crochet this row should have 31 chains so that's double single double single I apologize for the noise in the background there are literally planes that fly over us but anyways just continue doing this guys and then I will meet you at the end of the row um, you're just gonna decrease until you reach your desired length uh, for me I decrease for four rows and I just keep repeating the same thing If you are uncertain that you're doing the right thing, what I normally do is count the chains as I go. So each row I should be decreasing. So we started row one with 32. You should get 31 on the next and then 30 and then 29 and so forth. So for me, I ended up with 29 inches. Wait, did I do the math wrong? 32, 31, 30, 29. Yeah, I just ended at the fourth row. So I ended with 29 make two of the same thing for the body panels and then i'll meet you for the arms full disclosure before i move on to the arms since i started crocheting i already know how to gauge if i'm running out of yarn or not or if i have enough for a certain project and my gut feeling was telling me that if i continue doing the same stitch i will completely run out of yarn and i would need to order it again but i don't want to do that because i really want to finish this yarn and i want to share it i want to wear it and i want to make this tutorial so I pivoted and I use a different stitch for the arm um, I finished one side of it already so I am using a moss stitch for the arm and then just made a little ribbing so I'm gonna show you though how to do it with just the same exact stitch that we have been doing which is the griddle stitch or the lemon peel st stitch so we're, I'm just going to show you the same exact thing because if you do have enough yarn it would be nice to make it uniform but realistically if you put the moss stitch and the other stitch together it doesn't really look bad or it doesn't look like it doesn't belong together but that's just a full disclaimer just in case some of y'all would notice that it doesn't look exactly the same for me looking from far away it's completely fine for the arms i will show you both stitches in case you guys need intervention as well because yarn is running low now if you have enough yarn continue the same pattern but start with 56 chains and just adjust it accordingly based on how big your arms are and then skip the first chain then single crochet on the next Then double crochet on the next. Repeat the same pattern and don't forget to chain one after every row and then turn your work. Meet me once you reach 9 inches in height. I forgot to count how many rows it is. Then I will show you what to do next. Now if you want to learn the moss stitch, you can keep watching and I will show you how it's done. For my stitch, I started with 57 chains. Now don't ask me why, I thought I knew, but I just don't know. <laughs> Once done with chaining 57, skip the first chain, then we will do single crochets on each chains or Vs until the end of the row. Thank you. 
after row one chain two then turn your work now let me show you how to do the moss stitch for moss stitch the pattern is also very simple so first you skip the first chain then do single crochet on the next Once done with single crochet, you chain one, skip the next chain, and then single crochet on the next. You just repeat the same exact process until you reach the end of the row. I wrote the pattern on the screen as the guide and when you reach the last chain and if you notice there is extra chain just single crochet on it and then chain two For row 3 upwards, you will be doing the same pattern but make sure to do single crochets on the bigger chains or these. If you look closely on your work or on the video, you will be able to differentiate which one is the bigger V. It's just bigger hole compared to the other one. If you wanted to decrease the arms a little bit, meet me once you reach 9 inches in length or height, sorry. If not, you can just continue doing the same pattern until you reach your desired height. Alright, I am on the decrease area. I chose to decrease on this project because I don't want the arms to be dangling too much or I don't have to keep pulling them up. I don't know if I'm explaining that properly. For lemon peel stitch decrease, it is simple. Just skip the first chain, then do the next. So we're basically doing the same exact thing that we did for the color area, but you have to decrease on both sides. Then you have to alternate the decrease, which means row one you decrease, the second you don't, and then so on and so forth. Because I found that decreasing every row makes it look a little wonky. It just doesn't look right. I tried it and it's just not working for me. For moss stitch, here's how we decrease. Do not chain one after the last row. Simply skip the first chain and do single crochet on the next. And then you'll notice it's just a regular pattern, which is chain one, skip and then single crochet on the next and repeat remember only decrease every other row now once you're done with that you can use a marker to help you with your arm panel it is easier to remember where you put the decrease or where you started a decrease and you can compare it once you're doing the other panel Continue doing the same pattern and I will meet you at the end of a row so I can show you how to decrease on the other side. At the end of the row, you will simply skip the last chain and that would be your decrease. Now since we are alternating the decrease, on the second row, we will be chaining one and then we will just continue doing the same pattern. Guys, I understand some of this will be a little bit confusing, but if you have familiarized the moss stitch pattern, you can play around with it and the decrease will eventually work. That's exactly what I did for this project since I like to wing it. However, there will be rows where we have to pivot more than the others because we are greeted with a small chain or V which normally is a chain one space or the skip chain. So what I do with that is I just put single crochet on it and then I also single crochet on the next and then after that we are back on the normal pattern. I hope this helps and uh, if you have any other questions and things that are still confusing comment down below and i'll try to explain it better if i can to decrease on this row simply put single crochet on the second to the last chain and skip the last one 
and then we are back on the no decrease row so chain one and just continue doing the row one to three and apply it on this project until you reach your desired decrease or for my pattern it's up to 11 inches and then we are going to do the ribbing so once you're done with that come back and i'll show you how to do so Time to do the ribbing, get your smaller hook and let's start. We will be chaining 16 chains. I am making this ribbing a little bit longer since I made the arm length shorter. Now it's totally up to you how long you want the ribbing to be. I'll meet you once you're done chaining 16. After 16 chains, we will now be doing half double crochet slip stitch. Yarn over, insert in the chain, yarn over again, and then pull. Pull the first chain into the next two loops, and that's how you do half double crochet slip stitch. My camera just cut off, so we are going to continue on this part. But you are just going to continue doing half double crochet slip stitch. You should have 15 half double crochet stitches if you are following my pattern. For good measure, I usually like to count how many chains I have every row just to make sure they are even and I have the same exact number. So if we have 15, then we are good to go. Now we will be attaching the ribbing to the body panel. We will do two slip stitches, but skip the first chain where the 16 chains are attached. Start slip stitch on the next one. Slip stitch is like our chain two for ribbing. Turn your work and please remember do not attach any half double crochet slip stitch on those two slip stitches. Now it's time to continue to do half double crochet slip stitch on the second row. Until you reach the end of the row, I'll show you what to do next. Once you reach the end of the row, chain two and then turn your work. Now do the same exact thing, half double crochet slip stitch until the end of the row. And then we're just gonna repeat the same exact process. Slip stitch, do two slip stitches on the body panels and then so on and so forth. You're gonna be doing this until you reach the length of or the width, sorry, of your arm panels. And that's basically it. You just make two of these so you can cover both of your arms, of course, but yes. To attach your panels, double check which side you want the front or back to be. Then let's begin. Make sure your panels are aligned so it's not wonky. Then attach your loose yarn. You can do this however you want it. I just like to tie it together so it's secure. You can also use your needle to sew things together but on this instance, I am attaching them by doing the regular single crochets. Now once your yarn is attached and tied and secured, do single crochet on each holds. Make sure that you are stitching both sides, the front and the back. If you guys are watching the video and you're noticing there's so many loose threads, you can definitely wait to deal with this later. But from my end, I just don't want to think about them and I just don't want to go back and sew things again. So I include them on the project, but that's totally up to you. I just don't want to take care of them later. That's basically it. Also, you just have to continue doing this until you reach the end of the row and that's basically it you attach both sides of your project and then you will see how it would look like in a little bit this is how it looks like in the back and this is what it would look like in the front just a reminder guys just make sure you stop at where your shoulder ends because we will be doing the ribbing for the color differently 
in case I did not mention that but basically just do the same exact thing on the other side and then I'm going to show you how to do the color ripping Actually, before we do the ribbing, let us attach the arms first. If body panels are made evenly or exactly the same height and width, you can simply gauge the middle of your project. Then I like to measure each side for accuracy, which means my arm panel is 13 inches in width. So if I divide that by two, it will be 6.5 inches. inches. I can't speak so each side should have 6.5 inches and then I just put a marker in the middle so I know where to take a break and I can measure again to make sure each side still has the same exact measurement simply do the same exact thing that we did from the shoulder panel we're just gonna stitch them together by doing single crochets on both sides and that's basically it once you're done with the entire width of your arm panel cut the yarn and then we're gonna have to sew the rest of the body part if beginners are watching this i hope the instructions are pretty straightforward again if you have any questions please comment down below but you're just going to basically do the same exact thing for the rest of the panels that you have to attach tie a yarn and then make sure it's secured and then start doing single crochet and make sure both of the sides are attached and then you have to do this until you reach the arm area then i will meet you once you reach the arm area do not stitch the ribbing area yet there is a way that i like to do to make it look more cohesive and make it look like it's part of the ribbing once you reach the cuff area of your arm panels, here's how I like to sew these two sides together. Grab your smaller hook. So do front loop only on the side that's near you and then back loop only on the side that's further from you. And then we are going to slip stitch them together. This will give it a much better ribbing effect than just stitching them together with a single crochet. I've been asked about this in one of the comments as to how to give that little flowery effect with the ribbing. I found that if you have a longer ribbing on the cuff area and then you add this little shell borders, it would look wonderful. But if that's not for you, then you can skip this part of the video. But if it is for you, then let's get it. First, chain one. On the next chain, do single crochet and then on the same chain, you will be doing half double crochet and double crochet. On the next chain, we will be putting three crochet stitches as well. First is the triple crochet or the triple crochet second is double crochet and then half double crochet so basically we're gonna descend from here and then on the next chain we will be doing single crochet so it's that simple you're just gonna repeat the same pattern and it's gonna give you that effect Start where your shoulder panels ended and then attach some yarn. We have to do 10 chains. Now the height of your neck ribbing is totally up to you guys. I tried longer but it just doesn't look good on my short neck. So 10 chains it is. And the pattern is exactly the same as the arm and body ribbing or the lower body ribbing which means we will have double crochet slip stitch in each chains except for row one because you have to skip the first chain and then that means you will have nine chains in every row 
I will still write the pattern on the screen for guide in case you don't want to go back to the previous clips. So you can just look at the screen. When you reach row 2, remember do not use the two slip stitches that you made to the body panel. You have to do half double crochet on the very first chain that's attached to the ribbing. At the end of row 2, chain 2 and then turn your work and then do the same exact process. So you're basically just repeating row 2 and 3 until you cover the entire color of the sweater. And then I'm going to show you how to stitch them together. You've also seen it before but I'm just going to repeat it in case some of you have forgotten. So to get the ribbing effect, we will be doing the front loop only and then back loop only and then slip stitch. So front loop from the side that's near you or from the color that's near you and then back loop from the color that's far away from you. And then we'll just repeat that until we reach the end of the row. After that, cut the yarn and then pull through. And this is what it looks like. It looks cohesive and it looks like it belongs together. <laughs> Anyways, for the gingerbread man, I actually did not or I was not able to film how to make it. I would suggest just looking up on YouTube how to make the gingerbread man. I also just learned it on that day. I don't feel like I am qualified to give a tutorial about this but anyways I'm gonna show you though how I sewed it in on the sweater I think that is the annoying part for me it did take a little bit and you can't actually see the back of it so I am sewing blindly basically <laughs> 